that's a laning phase that showcases how even though I'm missing E a lot in the lane, I can still play correctly. Now we begin. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Sturdy Miles back with some more Allow Game Plan versus Riven in the top lane. She's running Ignite, a very spooky lane. But let's see how I do. I hope you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Yeah, I like the I like the Riven matchup. It's uh, it's fun. I think it's obviously I think Riven's gonna be a better champion, and I think that's uh, especially level one. Like she should have like zoned me off of the CS experience. She didn't do. A little bit of a misplay there. She's trying to wave clear the wave quickly, trying to just rush for two, thinking I'll probably be up trying to get minions and then all in me and cheese me with Ignite, which obviously I'm not going to do because I'm aware of that trying to do that. So we'll just chill out. Let the wave push into us. I'd actually like for this wave not to full crash. See how the timing worked out. My Q to kind of solve. If I can just keep the range minion out of the wave, that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah, let me get that CS. Almost let me get two CS by taking the turret shot. Then I miss all those. So. The most important thing versus Ignite when you're running teleports is not die uh, before she kills you with Ignite. You want to try to back, use your teleport, to refresh your bottle, spend your gold, and then try to prevent her from backing. So it's really awkward. Now the trick, one of the you see here, I'm still like keeping the minions just outside of this turret aggro range. That so keeps the wave right here. This is right where I want it. I've got territorial command. Uh, tentacles, I've got turret defensively, so the aggression plus ignite isn't as critical. Also, not uh, I'm not vulnerable to ganks as well. They could dive me, but it's a little bit you know, it takes a little bit higher level of execute. Now, really, this match is going to come down to how do I throw my ease in relation to her ability? She's going to probably come up for this minion, nope. go for the next one. I try to combo. Go for it. We're trying to read her out. What we're trying to do is figure out when we want to uh, throw our E to give us the best chance of landing. And we're going to try to utilize her. We're going to assume she's going to use abilities in a certain way and try to throw E a little bit preemptively. Game plan. That wasn't very I didn't think uh, that Q would kill all the minions the way it did. Otherwise, I would have just thrown E like right afterwards. You see here, I'm still just holding the wave. Probably something a lot of y'all would have not done. Y'all probably would have just let the wave crash by now. Really don't want to do that. The worst place you can be for a level 4 or level 5 Alawe is out in the open. You're very, very exposed. I should have do the QE there. Really cheeky way to just land some E's. But no avail. Grouse built up. I'm going to keep holding this. Hopefully this makes Riven fight me. I don't want to 1v2 this right now. I feel like this is just going to be awkward. And she's probably going to get a kill and our bottling just went the freak off. So we just play off that. Ooh, okay, buddy. All right, bud. Not good. But we get bailed out by just being aware that we can just stand like this and it's really hard for her to do anything. Uh, because she goes in on me, I can either E or Q. Of course, my E isn't up there. But... I'm not getting any looks for the QE combo. For those who don't know, on Alawe, you can uh, kill minions with Q and then E through afterwards, and it's like a really high percentage chance of landing if they're positioned correctly. Or incorrectly. I probably should just go in back. It's definitely a lane where you go, uh, like, Phage. We just want Holebreaker. This lane... This lane is all about who lives long... Like, if I live longer than her full combo, then all her stuff goes on cooldown, and I win. Like, that's that's pretty much our win con. Oh, let's see if I can get back to lane quick enough. I just want to hold this wave like I've been doing. Nice. I just want to stop her back. The reason I'm doing this is she doesn't have teleport. And now I'm going to... Deny one one wave minimum, two waves potentially. Uh, especially it's good since it's a cannon wave. And I'll definitely send bottle charges to do this. I'm gonna even I'm gonna clean up the wave a little bit though, so I don't take too much damage. And really what I want to try to do is the melees I'm not gonna be able to stop. What I want to do is keep the range minion out. Hit me too much. Deny all those. Oh. 
Now, I do want to be more aggressive, but right now, because she's backing and she's not in the wave, I don't want to push because sitting here freezing will deny more minions. Nice. Now, the big outplay potential in this matchup is your, if you can flash her R, you look like the coolest dude ever. Riven has a lot of ways to outplay your E between her Qs. Her Qs all are like mini dashes, and then her E is obviously one big dash. They can all be used to dodge your E. Makes it really difficult if the Riven's really, really good. Neverland E, because it's, it feels like those three, those four, you have three Qs and then one E. It feels like any of those are always up all the time. I'm going to do my classic, like, start pushing up. I can handle the 1v2. Use my wave clear and the threat of E. Really? You die? So difficult. Careful. Oh, it does bond to get the same. Gonna give up one, maybe two. Yeesh. Find a name. Here your bots once you go take this out. I have a tentacle coming up, so I can get that. Play off of I'm gonna run around. Play off this tentacle now. I am a teacher. We're still up 16 CS, right? And we've been pretty low risk, so we'll take it. She might like ult all in me here. Yeah, I know she's like not backing and there's no reason for it. I want to rush Hullbreaker, and the, the reason for that is I just want to be tanky. The, the I think I kind of was going to touch on this earlier, but sidetrack. Um, whoever, if I live past her full combo, I win. So what I'm going to do is build like defensive items in nature. I have a lot of gold. I think I'm just going to read that. It's going to buy like tanky item, items, so Phage is good for health. Like Hullbreaker is good in general. It's going to be 80 health, armor, and everything I want. Definitely a caps. I think I just go ahead and build steel caps. The moves seem really vital. The armor is going to be effective for top and jungle, as well as the auto attack reduction. A, a good Riven will will use auto attacks a lot using her animation cancels. So you, get, you get a good bit of value out of it. And then they're all AD, anyways. Work fine. I'm not going to hold this way. I'm just going to push. I suspect she really does want to reset. Been a much more passive win than I would expect. Most that's because I just haven't, like, landed good ease. She might, like, there's a chance she hid back here and is waiting for a deer to show up. Without oh, these two tentacles. Boom. Two deer comes up. I fight here. 1v2. Bam. Always, we always have a plan. We're never caught off guard. That's the goal. With Theodore bot now, so actually we don't really care as much. Still a really good spot to play off of. Especially like Missy or something. So we can wave clear really quickly if you just pull the wave. And then even though she kills that tentacle, we can just reset it. Because she was playing um, dashy, I got really close and increased the chance of my E landing. So bad. I think you poking him in. So, like, I kind of, there's a portion of me thinking there, okay, at any point she might just try to all in me. Because she does have Ignite, she has, like, CC chain, she has high DPS output. But the whole time I'm thinking, thinking, I've got her low enough, if she does go for that, I should just win. Like, I have Flash to dodge her ult if I need to, I should just ult and W spam, and she should die. So basically, my my aggression at that point forced her into a corner with no good options. 
Um, she could wait for the jungler to show up, which I likely wouldn't be too. We can try to go aggressive, which she likely loses. She could leave and reset, but she doesn't have teleport. She's going to give up several plates. So any of her options aren't good, and it's just because I forced her under turret, defended tentacles, put myself in good positions to land ease. Now we're, now we're really far ahead. The reason I reset there instead of going for first turret is I'm going to get this turret before 14 minutes, so the plate's not going anywhere. I should have bought another item up. Um, I, I'm hoping my bot lane doesn't give up first turret before uh, I get around to it, but I'm not going to get first turret there and get out alive. Like, I'm suspecting Udyr is going to be nearby. Atrox could roam up. Riven can, Riven's better, like no ult for no ult. I'm, I'm aware of that. Must have ult back up. I have flash. I should not throw E out like I have been. I should hold it. I'm going to hold it this way. I have W to get the tentacle proc as it's dying. I'm going to, like, really force her into an awkward position. I'm going to actually throw in the dirty dive. For those who don't know, that's a that's a skill I've used for years. I think I kind of came up with that in Season 7. What you do is you walk up. I, the Cynical actually should have gone on the, onto the turret. And you just kind of bait them. And what they think is, wow, you're like under my turret. Um, that's a terrible position for you. You should just die now, right? They'll all end me. And that's exactly what I want. I want them to all end me. Because then I can E the ult. And my, I won't draw turret aggro until I'm full comboed. At which point she'll die like in point, you know, 2.5 seconds because she's squishy and I'm high DPS output and she's getting hit by tentacles and stuff. And it basically is just a way to manipulate them to not not running around. Like, I don't want them to, to run around. So if I walk up under turret, put a tentacle, they'll probably just all in me. And that can just be kill. It works real. It works until probably... High diamond, low master. Even then, I can still get like the cheeky kill on a lot of even challenger players using that. At this point, though, it worked a lot better in season seven and eight and nine. But after several years, I've kind of just trained all of NA top laners in high elo how to play around it. So they don't really fall for it anymore. But I guess in that sense, it's a, it's a cheesy strategy, right? It's not really going to work for some really good players who are trained against it. But. Until until you go versus players who are are used to it and know how to counter it, it's gonna work. Pretty well. Which I believe that's kind of the uh, the definition of a cheese strategy. A strategy that's not not actually that great if people know how to play around it, but if they don't know how to play around it, it works effectively. Fine. Dean Brock. Even if she dodges the E, I, I can uh, do some damage. I have Flash R. They have four melee as well, so my, I mean, I should be OP this game. I should 1v9. Just looking at team composition. A single pardon. What I want to do is just have a good tentacle setup. Maybe play off this bush. Fight them into it. E, Flash R. They might have Rage with. Get them to Rage. Oh no, they're just all mid. Okay. I was like, this game's like pretty close. Surprise. They rage quit from top lane, I guess. Alright, I guess I'll just hang out. I talked about this in my last video. This is really a strategy I wouldn't have done in, in seasons of old. Oh no, my FPS is dropping a lot. I don't want to go for a fight here and like have five FPS. Peter, go away. My computer can't handle all your frames, dog. Oh, thanks. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you for the backup, yeah. That was helpful. I was gonna. So what I was doing, the reason I flash there is I want to insta kill Triss because she's really squishy and she's gonna be the hardest person for me to fight in that encounter. And be, so basically, 
the way a lot of Alawi's fights work are range people out on the edges are your real threats, right? So if you get to them and kill them with flash, you want to do that early. Because then what happens is the melee players, you can just kind of kite them back into your tentacles, into the center point of all of them. And they just get by, hit by like everything. It's really chaotic for them. Whereas the ranged champions would be able to dance around on the out on the on the fringes of the fight, where it's really hard um, for ten, for for multiple tentacles to hit. Hey, buddy. I'm bad. Dang, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have gone back in. I should have kept hiding out. I mean, yeah, we need Drake. I can teleport when I'm up. If we need to. I kind of would like to be alone. I don't get any of the whole breaker's uh, armor. Or magic resist. 38 armor of magic resist is an absolute crap ton. I and mean, think about it, mythic tank items only have 25 each. So it's, it's like having these stats of a mythic tank item. Think about that. I mean, that's what a whole breaker is doing for you. Upper bot just to get them to not go to Drake. Oh, they are a Drake. Right there. Yeah, not the best fight for it. Make sure to get Riven there. Yep. At that point, she's the healthiest target and most likely to be a threat to my team. Everyone else was like basically one shot from being killed. But I just want to focus on Riven. If you if you think about it this way, me landing E on Riven basically automatically sets her at like 50% HP. Because if we kill this, it'll do 65% of her health. She's on the 35%. Roughly, there's like math with like armor and resistances and all that. So it's not exactly that, but you get the idea. And then uh, so we have this like easy target that a lot of AOE will hit. And then you just have to deal 35% the rest of the HP on Riven. Really easy to do. Really squishy champion if you can uh, hit her. The problem is she's very mobile. No ult again, so I want to be a little bit careful. Be very, very quiet. Quite a death sense yet. They might just all run back bot. Take me out. Still here from now. My team's not pressuring anything, so I don't really... Well, actually, you know, Tristana is top. I'm fine to win before with as long as Trist isn't here. Oh. No. Mark. Yeah. That's whatever. Even if they lose the fight at this point, I'm uh, I'm just gonna like take things, make it really awkward for them. Like I can take two inibs, I can Kill multiple people and a 1v2, 1v3. They go Baron, that's a I don't think that's good. Our team can just stall around it. I couldn't flash because I queued. I queued. I queued. I shouldn't have queued. I was locked out of flashing. An enemy has been slain. I wanted to flash out of that queue from Aatrox and then like QW back into it. But I thought I had time to queue and then I didn't because I was too low. The Ignite like cut all my healing out.
<laughs> I definitely shouldn't have taken that much damage from turret. I was trying to bait him a little bit. I wanted to get low, low enough to where he actually did what he did, which is like all in me. Put my mic on to make sure I didn't mess it up. Um, he did what I want him to do. So I wanted to get lower, so he actually just all in me and stops like dancing around. The problem is I got too low. But then when I got anti-healed, it uh, kind of screwed me over. That's okay. I think even with that, I still could have had a win there. I seem to be able to flash. Awkward start. Keep splitting. We're just splitting bot, which is good. I'm going to split top, but Drake spawning is going to make it really awkward on them. Like, do they come fight me? Do they go to Drake? Ocean Soul would be incredibly bad if they if we got it. Bad for them. But they also need to spend like send like multiple people to me. I got two people here. That's what I want. 20 seconds on Drake. I don't want to die right now. I want to be really careful here. But I still want to pressure. I don't want them to be able to run to Drake. Bat my team. Baron buff makes it really awkward. Yeah, I don't really care too much. Nice. I talked about this in yesterday's video as well about like my my change in strategy, and you see here this is probably causing a lot of chaos on the enemy team, uh, and it's probably what opened up to like Udir getting picked, we're getting a free Drake. Again, I went for the uh, range champion. I don't know how I didn't like insta kill Tristana. Wow, thank you. Okay, I died really quickly though. Interesting. I'm really surprised I died that quick. He's uh, really fed though. I wasn't expecting that. We got Ocean Soul, that's good. I'm gonna build just more armor. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't go that. Maybe I should go Randuin. You crit, right? Yeah. The Warden's Mouth to Randuin's. I was hoping to get like Death Stance healing and start snowballing. Very effective. Yeah, I mean, just Mortal Reminder and Lord Dominic saying Kraken Slayer. Did indeed slay the Kraken. Spearing would be really nice. And you see, like, Tristan is really the only thing that can stop me. I'm gonna buff this up. Try to push. You see them pushing mid. I want to push with them. Actually, don't even mind rotating over to fight. Me too. Dude, they're just obsessed with me, man. Cool. We got Tristana off of it. That's good. I shouldn't have gone for the young Tristana. I should have gone for the young the melee champs. Cool. Pentakill! Yeah, I, I could have played the mid to late game better. I feel like they were like going like way too hard on me. Like they were, it felt like they were kind of obsessed with me, but. It is one of the plays I can do, right? Let's see, that was a really clean laning phase versus Riven. 
Uh, and I think that showcases like that's a laning phase that showcases how even though I'm missing E a lot in the lane, I can still like play correctly. Like it's not just about landing all your E's. Sometimes it's also about like the easy miss. Uh and or like wait, it's all about everything. It's a it's a big um yeah, everything works together. Uh second top damage, good job, Draven. Getting that top damage. Top damage charts. S rank or whatever it's called. Not the best KDA, but whatever. I don't care. KDA ain't my thing. Look at that gold diff though. 17 minutes. 4,200 gold diff. What was that? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Almost 5,000 gold difference. Yeah. That's pretty big. <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty good early game, if you ask me. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.